This is a call for fundamental reform in contemporary physics. This presentation shows that the method using the time of travel of two light rays, proposed by Einstein in his 1905 paper, is inappropriate for the determination of simultaneity for moving bodies. Moreover, if this light ray method is to be used, a conclusion exactly opposite to Einstein's conclusion is reached, namely, that simultaneity is not relative but absolute. Paradoxically, exactly by using this incorrect light ray method in conjunction with the second postulate of the so-called theory of relativity proves the true nature of simultaneity, namely, its absolute character. Simultaneous events in one system are simultaneous in all systems, moving or not. This is a trivial fact known in physics, expressed in Galilean transformations. This trivial fact remains unchanged despite failed attempts by the likes of Einstein to challenge absolute truths. To illustrate that the method with simultaneous arrival of two light rays, proposed by Einstein, is inappropriate for the determination of simultaneity of two events, observe two flash bulbs equidistant from the trigger of a bomb placed in stationary system, denoted by capital K. If flashes reach simultaneously the trigger, bomb will explode. Imagine that the two flash bulbs placed in stationary system, capital K, indeed flash simultaneously. Galilean transformations tell us that the two simultaneous flashes and stationary system, capital K, are represented as simultaneous flashes in moving system, lowercase k. The flashes in the moving system, lowercase k, according to Galilean transformations will also be simultaneous but the ray emitted from the front flash will reach the trigger of the bomb before the ray emitted by the back flash. Here it is again. Observers in the moving system, lowercase k, using classical physics through its Galilean transformations, conclude there was no explosion in stationary system capital K. If the arrival of rays at the trigger were to be the criterion. Therefore, if we were to use the arrival at a trigger of simultaneously emitted light rays, then it is exactly the classical physics that will sustain relativity of simultaneity. As seen it is classical physics that concludes that simultaneously arriving rays of light in capital K are seen as non-simultaneously arriving rays of light in lowercase k. The non-simultaneous arrival at a moving observer of simultaneously emitted light rays, however, constitutes no discovery at all by Einstein's so-called theory of relativity, but is a trivial result from classical physics. Erroneously used to conclude that simultaneity in one system appears as non-simultaneity in another system, moving with respect to the first. Lorentz transformations, even more so, tell us that the two simultaneous flashes and stationary system, capital K, are represented as non-simultaneous flashes in the moving system, lowercase k, let alone that even if velocity of light is constant, their arrival at the trigger will be non-simultaneous. Therefore, it follows from classical mechanics, and even more, from Lorentz transformations. And not from Einstein's so-called theory of relativity. That the observers in the moving system, lowercase k, will conclude that there had been no explosion in the stationary system, capital K. Should we use the erroneous method with light rays to judge for simultaneity? Second postulate of Einstein's so-called theory of relativity says that speed of light is constant independent of the velocity of the source of light. Therefore, according to the second postulate, 
Once the flash occurs it doesn't matter whether or not the source that emitted the flash was in motion or was at rest with respect to the system. Source of light in all cases behaves as if it were at rest with respect to the system. The bomb is at rest with the system. The sources of light are always at rest with the system because of the second postulate. Therefore, considering velocity of light equals constant, flashes from equidistant sources will reach the bomb always for the same time, independent of whether or not the system is moving. Unlike Einstein's impression, it is classical physics that would apparently prove relativity of simultaneity. If we decide to judge for simultaneity using the flawed light ray method, classically the moving observers will conclude that no explosion had occurred in the stationary system because the light rays did not arrive simultaneously at the trigger in the moving system. That conclusion is incorrect due to the incorrect method used to judge for simultaneity. This is not a fault of classical physics but is due to the proposed incorrect method to determine simultaneity. An equally wrong conclusion as the classical result about simultaneity is reached with the light ray method when using Lorentz transformations. Lorentz transformations lack physical meaning which is discussed elsewhere. But in this case the result of their application coincides with the classical result. It is a wrong result but that is only due in this case and in the classical case. To the flawed method applied to judge for simultaneity. Paradoxically, it is Einstein's so-called theory of relativity through its second postulate. That gives the correct result when the flawed light ray method is applied. The correct result is that simultaneity is absolute. Observers in the moving system will conclude correctly that there was an explosion in the stationary system when applying the flawed light ray method only if these use the second postulate of Einstein's so-called theory of relativity. In other words that so-called theory with its light ray method and its second postulate conclude exactly the opposite of what it is portrayed to conclude. Simultaneity is absolute. Time is absolute. However, we don't need to use a flawed light ray method and a postulate for the constancy of light speed to determine that. Classical mechanics will do. As long as we don't resort to improper methods to judge for simultaneity such as the discussed light ray method. The claim that simultaneity is relative is the very essence of what is claimed by Einstein's theory of relativity. Unfortunately, as demonstrated, such claim is unfounded and is only due to the application of a wrong criterion for simultaneity together with the wrong interpretation of the outcome of the application of that criterion. Therefore, Einstein's candidate theory of relativity must be rejected outright and must be removed from science at once without any further consideration whatsoever. The correct theory of relativity is the standardly known theory, mostly due to Galileo Galilei, and there are no reasons whatsoever to substitute it by any other theory let alone Einstein's internally contradictory candidate theory of relativity. The other name of an internally contradictory candidate theory, such as the one proposed by Einstein, is nonsense. And therefore, it must be rejected outright, without wasting efforts to validate it experimentally. Nonsense cannot be validated experimentally. Furthermore, any claims that experimental evidence had been found for the validity of Einstein's candidate theory of relativity are necessarily wrong, to say is mildly, and must be rejected out of hand. This is a call for fundamental reform in contemporary physics.